All right, everyone, we have a new Ebola report. Unfortunately, there has been a new case in Uganda. Uh, it's actually a Congolese girl who died of infection uh, while in Uganda, which shows, again, um, people are going across the border with regularity in these areas, and some of them may have Ebola. Unfortunately, the fact that you haven't traced every Ebola case uh, means that there are people who have active infections walking around in very densely populated areas potentially infecting others before it's found out and then sometimes they die sometimes they live by the way this shows again the fact that people are still dying with fair regularity upon getting Ebola shows that unfortunately the treatment while highly effective that's been developed has to be given before the person is symptomatic to be truly effective that's gonna be almost impossible it's possible if, if you find someone oh shit this person has Ebola and you trace their contacts you can administer it to them and keep them probably from dying that is assuming you can find them <laughs> assuming that they're willing to get injected with with uh, what is it MZAP I believe it's called um, that, that they're not, not already symptomatic once they get flu-like symptoms the death toll that would be six percent with treatment very early goes up to almost uh, a third then it goes up to about 50 50 if the person starts bleeding out of every orifice and you can lower it a little bit again with giving this treatment but you know it's still not great um, so you've got continuous problems with that also it's passed another grisly milestone over 2,000 people have now died in Congo as a result of the Ebola epidemic they could have stopped it when it was a few hundred uh, long ago they probably could have done that except that they didn't declare an international emergency and fully deploy their resources until it hit Goma which was fairly recently it was already killing people in and around Beni and Batembo cities respectively of a quarter and a half a million people they waited till it got to 1.2 million but uh, Goma which was last month before they declared their crisis it's now potentially going to hit several other urban areas that have populations again in the half million to million range um, once it enters all these populations like the, the number of possible hosts <clears throat> that you have is going to stretch resources mighty thin it's already in multiple provinces it's already crossed over into another country it's an all hell breaks loose situation by the way this particular location is near many international borders pull up a map and look at goma in congo which is now the goma and batembo that's the epicenter of of infection now Look at how relatively close it is to several international borders. Look at how close it is to several other countries that have very large cities, potentially with major international airports. We're talking about this general region of Africa. It's becoming more developed and a lot more densely populated. The problem is that if you've already got an, even if Ebola is not particularly good at replicating itself, and it's not, in all honesty, unless you have a crowded area, Ebola is pretty bad at going person to person. Uh, beyond maybe infecting one or two people it's not like flu flu I think it what is what's the vector uh, for flu it's like 12 people to every person infected so it can very quickly blanket enormous populations with Ebola it's like one point something so it's like if a person gets Ebola <clears throat> between one and two people is probably gonna get infected from them assuming they're coming into contact with other people at normal levels the big problem, though, is that Ebola is entering areas that are extremely densely populated. Some of these African cities are largely comprised of, of shack towns where the homes are barely as big as this office. Um, there's very poor sanitation. A lot of people, large families crammed into small areas. You don't have a lot of sanitation. You have secondary infection. You don't have a lot of penetration of these regions by modern medicine. Um, the clinics set up are, are like the, the lowliest clinics you could find in the worst parts of Appalachia in the US will be better equipped than the better places usually in most of these places in Central Africa um, outside of I mean you go to like Lagos or you go to Nairobi or something you can find modern medicine other than that though if you go to Goma if, if, if there's a hospital in Goma it's probably not particularly great it certainly doesn't have the kind of wards necessary to contain Ebola Western medicine has to step in the problem is that we're letting it spread further and further and it's becoming harder and harder to actually contain it it doesn't matter if you've got a treatment they've deployed hundreds of thousands of doses of this experimental vaccine they don't even know if it works it doesn't seem to have stopped the infections from happening it's still there it's not going uh, as a logistic curve mode as the West Africa epidemic it could though at any time you could have a mutation of the Ebola strain that's currently there at any given time 
and all of a sudden the number of new cases spikes and you don't know why until months later when a maybe if you're lucky an asymptomatic variety wipes out the uh, prior variety by inoculating everyone that's what happened in West Africa if it hadn't you know how many people would be dead by now most of Africa probably and probably large swaths of the rest of the world it probably would have become a world pandemic because it would have been able to. It was more resilient than normal Ebola. It was able to infect more people. It was able to go from person to person much more easily, survive on surfaces much more long-lastingly. Um, it could have gone into a world pandemic. All it needed to do was hit a place like, you know, Nairobi or Lagos. Now you've got an epidemic. It's unchecked. It's capable of spreading. The more people that are infected, the higher the chance of a mutation of that kind. Just the way it works. It's unfortunate, but the world isn't doing enough. It needs to do far more. It's unacceptable that a disease that ultimately, again, is not that adept at crossing person to person would kill several thousand people, jump borders several times at this point, and be ultimately completely uncontained, even if you do have a civil war zone going on. Well, then send in the troops, restore order, kill off all the rebels, and treat the Ebola patients. Do what you've always done before. Seems to have worked before. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's in Goma. You waited too long and it's in a city with over a million people crammed in like sardines into an area that's probably not that much bigger than uh, metropolitan Rutland. Yeah. Wonderful times. Yeah. Great, great response, World Health Organization. Yeah. But they don't care because it's Africans dying, so they don't care as much. <laughs> it's, it's not over here, so it's out of sight, out of mind. It really is. I see it in the comment sections of people that are like NIMBY mode on it. And they're like, well, no, it does, doesn't, oh, you, Ebola Chan, it's okay, you know, the Ebola Chan thing is funny, tongue-in-cheek, grave humor, mainly that was prefaced on people worrying that it was going to become a world pandemic. They just started rambling about the Red Death and the Dance Macabre and stuff like that. It is that time of year, that sort of stuff takes on relevance. What if it mutates and starts spreading rapidly right before Halloween? And then you've also you got Brexit and shit, it's like, you know, bad time to be an air traveler, I suppose. That's about all. Peace out.